In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. Our first reading explains that lepers were considered ritually unclean and were compelled to live outside the community. Yet Jesus reached out and touched lepers, and he still reaches out to us. At the beginning of our Eucharist, we approach the Lord, realizing that we need his healing touch. Lord, you raise the dead to life in the spirit, Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy. You bring pardon and peace to sinners, Christ of mercy. Christ of mercy. You bring light to those who live in darkness, Lord of mercy. Lord May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who teaches that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, if a swelling or scab or shiny spot appears on a man's skin, a case of leprosy of the skin is to be suspected. The man must be taken to Aaron, the priest, or to one of the priests who are his sons. The man is leprous, he is unclean. The priest must declare him unclean. He is suffering from leprosy of the head. A man infected with leprosy must wear his clothing torn and his hair disordered. He must shield his upper lip and cry, unclean, unclean. As long as the disease lasts, he must be unclean. And therefore, he must live apart. He must live outside the camp. The word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Whatever you eat, whatever you drink, whatever you do at all, do it for the glory of God. Never do anything offensive to anyone, to Jews or Greeks or to the Church of God. Just as I try to be helpful to everyone at all times, not anxious for my own advantage, but for the advantage of everybody else, so that they all may be saved. Take me for your model as I take Christ. The word of the Lord. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our mind so that we can see what hope his call holds for us. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. <coughs> A leper came to Jesus and pleaded on his knees. If you want to, he said, you can cure me. Feeling sorry for him, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him. Of course I want to, he said, be cured. And the leprosy left him at once, and he was cured. <coughs> Jesus immediately sent him away and sternly ordered him, Mind you say nothing to anyone, but go and show yourself to the priest and make the offering for your healing prescribed by Moses as evidence of your recovery. The man went away, but then started talking about it freely and telling the story everywhere so that Jesus could no longer go openly into any town, but had to stay outside in places where nobody lived. Even so, people from all around would come to him. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. This morning we marked World Day of the Sick by celebrating the Sacrament of the Anointing of the Sick in its communal form. We're perhaps more used to celebrating this sacrament individually as part of what is commonly called Last Rites. But this morning's ceremonies find echoes in today's gospel. The sacrament of anointing is one of the more touchy-feely sacraments. Well, Jesus saw a leper coming. He took pity on him. He reached out and touched him. It was a symbolic act which no doubt shocked the onlookers because by touching a leper, Jesus was rendered unclean himself. But physical contact is precisely what gives people, especially the sick and the wounded, a sense of warmth and joy. By the very act of touching another person, we accept that person as he or she is respecting all boundaries, of course. Jesus touched lepers, sinners, sick people, and the dead. Just imagine how good the leper must have felt when Jesus touched him. He felt he was human after all. 
His body was horribly wounded by leprosy, but his spirit was more deeply wounded by the sense of having been rejected and abandoned by everyone. So by touching him, Jesus healed his wounded spirit. This morning, people presented themselves for anointing for all kinds of reasons. I didn't hear sense of anyone throwing their crutches away or putting wheelchairs up for sale or anything like that. But I do know even by their facial expressions that there was a lot of spiritual healing going on. And sure, as regards anything physical, well, sure, who knows? But spiritual leprosy is a reality in every age. It's a sickness of the soul which cuts us off from God and is much more serious because it remains invisible, festers and goes unnoticed for a much longer time. And the really good news for all of us is that just as Jesus reached out to touch and cure the leper, he stretches out his healing hand to bind up the wounds of all our resentments and hurts and sins. Lord, touch and cleanse my whole life, that I may be ever more open to receive your love and to give it back now and forever. Amen. We stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial of the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In confidence, we bring our prayers before our God who heals and restores to life all who suffer in this imperfect world. Let us pray that we as a Christian community may respond with compassion and generosity to those who feel isolated and alienated within our community. Lord, hear us. Let us pray that civil leaders and all in positions of authority will do all in their power to ensure that as a society we treat all people with respect and dignity and provide justice for all. Lord, hear us. We pray that our society will always cherish our children and have a deep respect for the unborn. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for those who are sick at home or in hospital, that we, as their families and friends, will always be there for them. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for peace in our world and that nations will be reconciled with one another. We remember in a special way 
all those trapped in regions of violence through no fault of their own, together with refugees and displaced people. Lord, hear us. And we take a moment to pray for all our own intentions. especially a, a person who's very ill at the present time and who has asked my prayers at the masses this weekend. Lord, hear us. We pray for all who have died. The recently deceased, Seamus Hughes, Simon Wallace, Peter Hackett, Theresa Beatty, Carmel Renshaw Nee Breen, Rosa Simoes Lamero, Hannah Henry, and Patsy Moore of Liverpool, and Margaret Harvey, formerly of Oran Fold, who has died. Her funeral mass will be on Monday here in St. John the Baptist at the 10 o'clock mass. Uh, remains reposing tomorrow in Quinn Brothers Funeral Home from 12 noon till 5 a.m. And at this time we remember Mary Gribbon, Antonio and Ricardina Pereira, Teresina Fraga, Cosme Zimenez, Tiffania Orne, Maria de Deus, Bartolomé Vaz, Lawrence Gama, Dionisio Suarez Vaz, Timpna Hall, deceased members of the Hall and Creaney families, Pedro Marcus Suarez, and Francisco Gama. And today is the first anniversary of Jerry McLean and the anniversaries of James McConaughey, John Desmond Kelly, John Rooney, Pat McKeever, Patricia and Joe Wilson, Paul Jude McCann, Peggy McVeigh, Anna Maria and Ophelia Rego, Jose Felipe, Francisco Xavier, and Patrick McGrath. And tomorrow, Sunday, the anniversaries of Bernard Duffy and Sean Mulholland. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings we have received. May we thank you by lives of faithful service through Christ our Lord. My brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. <laughs> You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy their these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Eamon, our Bishop, his assistant, Bishop Michael, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, our venerable spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, 
Jesus Christ. For him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, let's see what we have here. Big week coming up because Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. Mass is here in St. John's at 8 a.m. and at 7 p.m. and there's a 10 a.m. Mass in St. Patrick's. And Ash Wednesday is a day of fast and absence and the collection is for the sick and retired priests of the diocese, blue envelope. Uh, notice there about the Armagh Diocesan Pilgrimage to Lourdes. Uh, and the Lourdes Committee urgently need volunteer workers and nurses, so full details are in your bulletin. The Knights of Columbanus Lenten Reflection Fish on Friday, uh, and they invite you to a short period of peaceful reflection before the Blessed Sacrament each week, occurring after the Friday evening, the 7 p.m. Mass. And Throcra boxes are available in both churches. And recent collections last week, £1,162, the Priest Jews collection, £3,187.94, and the Bishop's Commission's collection, £593.88. The standing order amount for January, £807. And thank you to all who contributed. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Mm -hmm.